Hello, this is Mr. Buffington with our order of operations lesson. Basically, does the order matter? Brief overview for what you may have seen in the past with order of operations, just so that we're all on the same page. If you have seen this before, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, P-E-M-D-A-S, or there's several different versions of this. Some people call it bed math. Some people, anyway, I've seen lots of different versions, but this is the most common with this phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And this explanation that goes on along with it, parentheses or grouping symbols is the P, exponents is E, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Now, I'm going to tell you that I don't like this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but I recognize that most people at least have some familiarity with it. So I may refer back to it, but I prefer to think of it instead of thinking it as linear, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. I think this is the better way to look at it, where we have parentheses first or any grouping symbols. You could put G in there for grouping symbols. It might even be better. E for our exponents. Then we have multiplication and division on top of each other. And the reason I put them like that is because people read from left to right. And when we read it this way, we see, oh, we come to multiplication division at the same time. And that's the way we should do it. We should do multiplication and division in one step from left to right, and addition subtraction also in one step from left to right. So you'll notice I changed my symbols up in the top left hand or right hand corner there so that it's not linear multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Instead, we do multiplication, division first, then we move to addition, subtraction. So you'll see that I have those in the corners from now on just as a reminder to us of the order that we should be doing these operations. Now let's take a look real quick at why order matters. We have the same question, 3 times 2 plus 8 divided by 2. Notice with these questions I'm using this dot here as multiplication. That's very common for algebra to not use the, um, the multiplication symbol, that x because we often use x as a variable. So you'll notice that all of the multiplication, I use that dot instead. So 3 times 2 plus 8 divided by 2. On the left, I'm going to solve it just straight left to right. I'm going to start here and do 3 times 2. And on the right, I'm going to try and do it in a different order. So here I'm going left to right. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 8, 14. And over here I did 3 times 2 is 6. And then I did the division 8 times 2, or 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so you'll see that the answers come out different when we do them in different orders. And that's why there has to be a standard. Which order are we supposed to do these operations? Do we do, um, the main change here was whether we did addition first or whether we did division first. And so you have to say which one is right and which one is wrong. And doing division first is correct. We should do division before we do addition. So that would be correct over here. But I want to point that out because there is a lot of mistakes made and you have to understand that the order does matter. All right. That being said, let's do a quick recap on the rules. These are the, this is the way to do it right. First we do parentheses or any kind of grouping symbols. Parentheses or brackets go with that. Exponents look like this when you have something raised to the power of something else, like 3 to the power of 2. And that's exponents. We're not going to talk about that much in this lesson at all, actually. Um, and then multiplication and division, one step from left to right. In other words, we, we hit them both at the same time. Then we do all the addition, subtraction, one step left to right. So let's start off simple with two operations. We have 4 plus 24 and 24 divided by 4. The operations are addition and division. Which one do we do first? Well, we should do division before we do addition. All right, our multiplication and div division get done before the addition subtraction. So we have 24 divided by 4, which gives us 6. And then we do the addition last. 4 plus 6 is 10. Another example over here, 5 plus 7 times 2. Again, are we doing our addition, 5 plus 7, 
or our multiplication, 7 times 2. Which are we going to do first? Well, we do multiplication before we do addition. So I've purposely put these, these samples up here so we don't just naturally go left to right. We have to bounce around a little bit. 7 times 2 is 14. Then we have our addition, 5 plus 14 is 19. So follow these examples in making sure you do the division and the multiplication first, then you move on to the addition subtraction. Here are some examples that illustrate the most common mistakes that people make with order of operations. I've sort of addressed it before. The, the common mistakes are that we go, um, we think of it linear, multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction, which is incorrect. We need to think of it, like we said before, multiplication and division get done in one step from left to right. So when we look at this, we have 28 divided by 4 and 4 times 2. We are going to do the division first because that's the one we come to when we start at the left and move to the right. So division gets done first, 28 divided by 4, which gives us 7. And then we do our multiplication, 7 times 2 is 14. All right, we would get a very different answer if we did multiplication first. And it's important that this is correct when we do multiplication and division one step left to right. Addition and subtraction is the same thing. 8 minus 3 plus 2. We have a subtraction, 8 minus 3, and addition, 3 plus 2. We would do the subtraction first because we come to subtraction first when we start at the left and we move to the right. Addition and subtraction get done in one step. This is the most common mistake that people think of it linear and they think, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and they go, P, parentheses, E, exponents, and then they go, M, multiplication, do all that, then go to D, division, do all that, then A, addition, do all that, then F, subtraction, do all of that, and that is not right. All right, so we have to, these two questions I think illustrate really clearly the most common mistake for order of operations. You just need to remember multiplication and division here, addition, subtraction, one step here. And you'll be in good shape. All right, now let's move on to some sample questions that illustrate how we do all of these operations kind of mixed together. So here's our first sample question, 24 divided by 3 minus 4 times 2 plus 1. Think about our order of operations. Use those kind of symbols in the corner to help remind you. First we do, we have no parentheses or exponents. So we immediately go to our, our left side, multiplication and division, right? our left side here. We start at the left and we move to the right. And the first operation we come to that is multiplication or division happens to be division. So 24 divided by 3 is what gets done first. Now we have subtraction, multiplication, and addition left. And of those three, we do multiplication first. 4 times 2 is 8. Now we have subtraction and then addition, and so we would do them in that order. First subtraction, 8 minus 8 is 0, and then addition, 0 plus 1 is 1. Again, this example, I'm trying to really hit home that idea. Addition and subtraction, one step. Multiplication and division, one step. All right, left to right. Here's a question with grouping symbols. When you're dealing with grouping symbols or parentheses, they get done first. So whatever is inside there, it doesn't matter what operation it is, gets done first. If there are multiple operations inside of there, you do them according to the order of operations in multiplication, division first, then addition, subtraction. In this case, we have one operation, 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 is 4, so we'll just do that. Now, I have these, this parentheses left there. You don't have to leave them there. This, it means exactly the same thing when you have them times something with the parentheses. So I'll get rid of those just to make our life easier. Now we have addition and multiplication. Multiplication gets done first. Then we have 24 plus 5, which will give us 29 as our final answer. Again, start with our grouping symbols, then do multiplication division. In this case, there was only multiplication. Then do addition subtraction. In this case, there was only addition. We get our final answer. 
Now we're going to do one with even more grouping symbols. We have brackets and parentheses. The way I look at brackets and parentheses is you have to look at both the opening and the closing brackets and everything inside there gets done first. Then we look inside there and think of it as almost a separate problem. 10 minus the quantity of 5 plus 4. And I would do all of that in one step or depending on what needs to get done. In this case I have 5 plus 4 inside of parentheses so that would get done before the subtraction. 10 minus whatever that is. So 5 plus 4 is 9 and I'm going to get rid of the parentheses at this point because um, we don't need them anymore. We've finished everything inside there. Now I have 10 minus 9 which leaves us with 1. And personal preference I would rewrite this as just 4 times 1 times 6. Some people like leaving those parentheses. The parentheses at this point mean multiplication. So it means 4 times 1. I just like to rewrite it so that it looks more consistent. It's up to you. In this case it makes absolutely no difference because we're going to go from left to right. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. And that's how we would solve this question. The last question illustrates um, part of order of operations that is oftentimes forgotten. And that is that when you have a division bar or a, a fraction like this, you do everything on the top first and on the bottom and then you take care of that division at the end. So if we are going to take the top divided by the bottom, you would have to almost think of it like there's a whole set of parentheses, 5 minus 2 times 2. Do that first. And 12 divided by 4 times 4, times 1, I'm sorry. Do that. So you do what's on the top and what's on the bottom, then you worry about the fraction, if, there, if anything needs to be done to that fraction in the end. So on the top, I have 5 minus 2 times 2. You can see that I did the multiplication first. 2 times 2 is 4. On the bottom, I had 12 divided by 4 times 1. So I have division and multiplication. And we know with division and multiplication, you start at the left and move to the right. So first I do 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Now I have 5 minus 4 in the top. 5 minus 4 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And that would be my final answer there, 1 third. Now I can take that and do 1 divided by 3, but this isn't really a lesson on fractions, so I wanted to kind of keep it simple. This is a simplified fraction in its simplest form. We'll just leave that as our answer. Um, later on, you'll sometimes get things that need to be simplified in fractions, but again, this isn't a lesson on fractions. So. Quick recap, our final recap on our steps for order of operations. We do the parentheses or any grouping symbols first. What's inside of them gets solved first. Then we move on to exponents, like 3 to the power of 2. Then multiplication and division get done in one step, starting at the left, moving to the right. If you come to multiplication first, you do multiplication first. If you come to division first, you do division first. Whichever comes first, moving left to right. Addition and subtraction work the same way. After all the multiplication and division are done, then we move on to all of the addition and subtraction, starting at the left, moving to the right. That's the correct order of operations. Hope that lesson was helpful for you and have a wonderful day.